Welcome again to the Daily Connection. Let's pray. Father, would you open our hearts and would you just encourage us as we go through your word here for this short bit of time. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, we're in Revelation chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 12 through 20, the rest of the chapter here in this uh, devotion. So we begin in verse 12. And remember, these are John's words. Uh, he is describing, uh, he's already told us he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and he's describing now what he is seeing. He says, Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe, and with a golden sash around his chest. Now, I just want to point out here that uh, uh, John says seven golden lampstands. You say, well, what are they? Well, that's going to be described in just a few verses. But he says, in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man. John uses here, when he says son of man, he uses the messianic term for Jesus, son of man. Uh, This was a term first used by Daniel and then used, of course, throughout the Gospels, and particularly uh, in the Gospel of John. So it's not surprising to see uh, here another book uh, that John is under the control of the Holy Spirit recording that we would see this terminology, the Son of Man. Now notice this description he gives uh, here of our Lord. He says, the hairs of his head, verse 14, the hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. Now this comes directly from Daniel 7 and uh, verse 9, an allusion to Daniel 7 and verse 9. And then he continues, he says, his eyes were like a flame of fire, a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in the furnace, and his voice was like the roar of of many waters, the idea of power, the powerful voice of the Lord. And this is a direct uh, link to Daniel 10 and verse 6, Daniel 10, 6. In his right hand, he held the seven stars. Now, you say again, what are the seven stars? Well, he's going to tell us that as we get to the end of chapter 1. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. Now, we know that the very word of God Hebrews tells us what is is sharper. Uh, It it, it is a two-edged sword. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, right? So we know the Word of God is pictured as powerful. And we're certainly going to see that several times in the book of Revelation. We have a description of the voice or the Word of God, and it is always one that depicts power. Uh, And I cannot wait until that day when we we hear uh, the actual voice of our Lord. Can you imagine? what that's going to be like. So he says, uh, From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. The S-U-N sun shining in full strength. Now, I want you to remember that John, we kind of say he along with Peter and John were, uh, were or, or Peter and James, so you had James, Peter, John, uh, were part of kind of the inner circle. Uh, of Jesus' disciples, meaning they were privy to more things. They seemed to be uh, with Jesus at some more uh, key times. And we remember the transfiguration in Matthew 17. Well, John was there, so John has seen Jesus before. Now, that was about 65 years before this event here in the book of Revelation. Uh, And there on the Mount of Transfiguration, John saw, he caught a glimpse of our Lord in all of His glory. Uh, And now he's seen Him again. Uh, in this state of glory, and he's given us a wonderful, wonderful description. Now, I want you to notice the effect this had upon John, Uh, the the effect that it would always have upon any of us if we were to see our Lord in his glory. Look at verse 17. John says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. D-E-A-D, dead. Now, sometimes you'll see, you'll hear people. We, I, I've heard false teachers before, right? And they'll say uh, that they were having some sort of conversation with Jesus. Dear friend, 
you don't have a conversation with Jesus. When you hear the voice of Jesus, when you see our Lord in His glory, all you can do is fall down. Now, falling down this way is, is a way of worship, but it also shows the fear that we have in front of a holy God, a, a reverential, a holy fear. Well, that's what John uh, had here. Uh, what else could you do when you see our Lord uh, in His glory but fall down as dead? Now, we continue reading the text, and it says this, He laid His right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. So how comforting this must have been to John. Uh, Jesus reaches down, touches him, says, do not fear. Now this tells us John absolutely was afraid. So again, it's reverential, it's a way of worshiping him, but dear friend, he is afraid. And it's interesting because in Matthew 17, verse 7, at the Mount of Transfiguration, the same thing occurs. And Jesus does the same thing. Now we continue reading, and our Lord says, I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Now I love that, forevermore. I died, but I am alive uh, forevermore. A great allusion to the resurrection. And then our Lord says, and I have the keys. I have the keys of death and of Hades. Now, Jesus' point is to say, key does what? It unlocks, right? And so the point is, Jesus is saying, I am the judge. And we're going to see that later uh, in Revelation chapter 20, right? He says, I am the judge. I decide who goes to heaven, uh, and I decide who goes to Hades, who goes to hell. Now, of course, all believers uh, are those who uh, have placed faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to heaven. But Jesus is saying, I am the great judge between those who are saved and those who are lost. Uh, the judge is not a particular church. It is not a particular denomination. Uh, and it is certainly not a particular human. There's no man or woman uh, that is the judge. There, only Jesus himself holds the keys. He alone is the judge of mankind. And then we go to verse 19. Now here in verse 19, we have a wonderful threefold outline of the book of Revelation. Look at this. Uh, he tells John, write there for the things that you have seen, those that are, and those that will take place after this. A wonderful threefold. Now I just want you to concentrate for a moment on this threefold outline in the book of Revelation. You say, well, is Revelation a book about the future? Is it a book about the present? Is it a book about the past? Well, right here... Uh, John makes it very clear. Uh, the book is telling us, right? We, we have the past, things you have seen. Uh, we have the things that are, which are going to be the, these seven churches in chapter 2 and chapter 3. Then once we get to chapter 4 and the rest of the book of Revelation, it's going to be the things that will take place after this. So past, present, and future. We do not have to wonder uh, what John is relaying to us time-wise in this book. Now we move on to verse 20. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw at my right hand and the seven golden lampstands. Now he's going to interpret it for us, so this is important. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Now these would be, uh, angel remember can mean an angelic being or a human messenger. Here it clearly means a human messenger. So he's saying, he's speaking about the church uh, leader. And then he says, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. These seven churches. Now, I mentioned uh, as we began uh, the book of Revelation that all of the symbols, there are many symbols in the book of Revelation, but all of them are either identified in the book of Revelation itself, such as the seven stars and the seven lampstands, or they are identified in other places in Scripture. So we absolutely can have an understanding of what God is saying in this book. No wonder he said, blessed are those who read and hear. And let's not forget those who are obedient, those who keep His Word.